Yet another improvised studio, this time it's on a flight case and the lighting is probably one of the most expensive studio lights in the world. It's a bad boy, which is just firing off the ceiling to provide all-round illumination. And this video is about the connectors we use on this job. It's C-form connectors, it's about Succapex connectors, and I'll just explain why we use each one. So one of the most common connectors in the industry for power distribution is C-form using TRS, tough rubber sheath cable. In this uh, instance, the cable is cross-sectionally of 2.5 millimetres on the conductors. Now, the main advantage of the uh, C-form is that although it's kind of waterproof, but it's not super waterproof. The main advantage is that it deals with water ingress very well. It's got good anti-tracking facilities inside. It's got good separation between the connections. And it's got sort of terminal shrouds around them that stops water bridging directly across them. Unless it gets really filled up with water. But they're very good. They're very reliable. And the power distribution usually comes across in multiples of six circuits through a type of cable... Uh, that we call Succapex. Uh, it's a, basically a 19-pin connector that the entertainment industry adopted because it just at the time they were looking for something that could handle six circuits. And the reason for six is that we've got three phases and it was convenient to have a dimmer rack with, say, phase one, two, and three, and then one, two, and three again. And it meant the m most handy multiple of the three phases was probably six. So that's why they chose it. And the... Uh, way they configure it, the outer pins are alternate live neutral, live neutral, and I have to say, it's now this connector is now so commonly used in the entertainment industry that they are custom, you know, marked for the entertainment with the circuit designations in them, which has the uh, phase pairs, this uh, should I say circuit pairs, plus the earth uh, in this sort of inner ring, and then the middle pin has never really been used for much. Some some companies use these cables for other purposes, like audio uh, feeds to speakers, which is a terrible idea, because if they get connected up accidentally, you can blow all the speakers up, and that has happened. But it's a connector that isn't... It's got its pros and cons. It's not very waterproof. Uh, I'd say that one of the best advantages of this is it's a nice, robust connector. Um, it's very good when you pull it. When you pull the connector, it doesn't snag on things. It tends to ride over them. The... Okay, uh, that's my, my colleagues uh, putting an acoustic shroud over my head there for extra drama. Uh, one of the advantages compared to the Harting connectors, the rectangular ones with pins, is that the Harting ones tend to snag on stuff. These ones just tend to ride over stuff when you're pulling them, which is very handy. Uh, the downside, as I said, one of the biggest downside is that they're not watertight, and that causes problems when they're used outdoors. You have to go to you have to make a special effort to uh, shield them from water or shed it across them because if you don't, then the, you get tracking issues in either where they mate or uh, sometimes at the back inside if water gets in there. But it's very good. It means the cables are quite chunky and heavy, but um, it certainly saves running. Well, that's the equivalent of running uh, six of these, so you can see that it's a significant saving and it's just more convenient. Another connector, and it's another end of this, is the uh, PowerCon. Now this, uh, I think, is this a new trick connector? It was originally a SpeakerCon, uh, was the first style of this connector I can think of, but they realised that it was quite useful. It was quite a good, chunky, robust connector. So this was their first version uh, of a, the PowerCon connector, which you push it in and twist and it locks. So you have to, to unlock it, you have to physically pull this back and rotate it. The downside is that you can't um, you can't uh, break a load of these. If you unlock this and you turn it while you've got a high load in it, it will often uh, draw an arc inside and it will often go bang and it will destroy the connector, which isn't so good. Uh, they do have a new version which uh, solves that problem. It uh, is designed to break the load. Although, unfortunately, uh, a safety warning had to be put out that people were somehow managing to force them in, in the wrong position just using brute force and ignorance. And were actually, if you do that, then the earth can end up connected to the live, which is not a great thing. So uh, that's worth keeping an eye on. Um, the socket packs, going back to the socket packs, the fan outs can either be a socket packs cable with just a bunch of flexors coming out the back, or if uh, you can have something like this that we use a lot of these in this job, 
where this is mounted on this sort of truss work and you've got the male end in that you connect the sucker pegs to and then you can extend it out so you can parallel circuits out from this side and that just breaks it out into a convenient number of sockets and um, very very handy indeed um, other things well when for running equipment just off local power you've got the uh, 13, traditional 13 amp uh, plug to the C form socket um, oh, another, another connector. This is commonly used, well, it's commonly used for some Christmas lighting as well, but this is commonly used with a Philips uh, light we've used in this job called an eye white. And uh, it's a four pin connector with the earth connection and then three other cores, which uh, in this case are used for live neutral and data. And the running of data with the power does mean that when things go wrong, they're quite noisy and spectacular. Um, now, this is a Harting connector. I'm not sure. What would you actually call this connector? Because I've, I've never really thought about that. What you'd actually, if you'd generically describe this, uh, to get one from an electrical distributor other than the four pin Harting. I know they do the flimsy plastic ones in the Christmas lights, which is terrible because whereas these ones uh, lock together and they have these quite painful uh, snapping mechanisms that clip onto the pins, the Christmas lighting ones are often plastic and uh, the pins just snap off, which isn't really surprising. But other than that, it's quite a good connector. For getting our data about, one of the most common cables we use are XLR. Now, the audio side of things normally uses 3-pin XLR. If uh, you're using proper DMX cabling, it's 5-pin, partly to differentiate it from the audio um, cables, but also because the uh, DMX standard, uh, the designed for multiplexing dimmer, uh, dimmer channels, specifies five pins with a common screen or common ground and then two separate networks although in this case it's almost certain that the well actually this one might actually be five pin five, uh, five core but uh, most of the connections just use a single pair in that and uh, it's just used to connect data along uh, link lights together and the whole point of it uh, the DMX is it reduces the number of uh, cables required because in the old days with dimmers you had to have one analog signal to every dimmer and that meant uh, a common wire and then if you had 30 dimmers in a rack you'd have one analog signal which either went 0 to 10 volts to control the dimming intensity or 0 to minus 10 volts uh, depending on which manufacturer's uh, equipment you were using and to multiplex they originally introduced a standard called D54 which was analog still but it was uh, a sort of stream of analog levels with synchronization pulses and uh, it, you basically whatever channel you pro your dimmer was set to it would sample that analog pulse uh, as it came through the sampled analog voltage but that was uh, quickly replaced by dmx 512 which transmits a continuous stream of data about 250 kilobits a second and transmits up to but not necessarily the full 512 but up to 512 channels of data plus uh, synchronization pulses which uh, saves an awful lot of cabling. On this job, I think we've got about... Uh, Vince, how many uh, DMX universes do we have on this job? About 12? Is it round it? Certainly more than 8. 14. 14, yeah. On this job, we've got 14 universes of DMX, and we've also got prong crackers. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Mmm, tasty. So that's uh, most of the connectors we've got here. It's not all of the connectors. The other ones for the C4 also gets used for higher currents like 32, uh, 32 amps and way up 64 or 65, uh, 125 amp I think is the next step and also single phase and three phase and then we go right up to uh, the power lock connectors which are individual cores which uh, handle up to 400 amps and they're uh, based on an original connector that was optimised for ship to shore power uh, for connecting boats to docks uh, when they were uh, docked up to uh, provide an easy way of getting power onto the boat. Also very similar to welding cables, but we use it for uh, distributing our higher current supplies from unit to unit. And I'll show you some of that stuff later on. But that's, uh, that covers most of the connectors we're using in this job.